My job is to kind of dig into what I think where I'm headed as a specialty in plastic surgery. And, and I want to share with you something that I got shocked about, honestly. I left there going, holy smokes, this is going to be where we're going to be. This gentleman here, very nice man. He's in Manhattan. His name's Sid Coleman. He's been one of the pioneers of fat transferring. And um, he did a wonderful presentation about the history of fat transferring. I have done a lot of fat transfers. Don't get me wrong that this is new to me. What's new is some of the new technologies as to how it all works. Not surprisingly, many techniques for grafting do not give long-lasting results. And I can tell you I've fat transferred a lot of lips over the years, and I have felt that maybe 30 or 40 percent stays. I've always told people that if I'm going to do your lips, 30 to 40 percent of fat will stay. With the newer techniques, it's almost 100 percent, and we're going to talk about why. Now, don't get grossed out by that picture. But you know what that is? Anybody have any idea what that is? Pizza, pizza, kind of. If you eat too many pizzas, that's what you get. That's half, that's half of a piece of a tummy tuck where the fat came off. And this is a very unique case I did of a lady who I harvested fat. All those syringes are fat syringes. And then it's put on a, on a, on a, on a device to, to take the purified fat. And one of the things that Dr. Coleman mentioned really matters on how small the diameter of the cannula is that you put it back in with, okay? That's been the key. And one other very important factor, and it has to do with the techniques of how you do it. And one of the things that this man and the whole panel of people who are the best in this field talk about how the fat gets injected in multiple layers with a blunt tip cannula so you're not damaging tissue. This is a centrifuge and I think this is the key guys if I were to illustrate one thing tonight that tells you why this is different. This is a spun down tube of fat okay and this is where all the rubber hits the road tonight. When you centrifuge fat you see the different colors in these layers? This lower layer that doesn't show very well is blood. So when you spin a tube down all the fluid goes to the bottom and then the particulate matter or the fat layers out in density, okay? This two to three millimeter layer right here is probably the most amazing thing we've seen in a long time is at varying degrees of density, there's certain cell lines in that fat that make a difference on if fat stays or not. Very, very important. It has to do with stem cells, fat contains stem cells, okay? Your own fat contains up to 350,000 stem cells per cubic centimeter. So why is that important? Well, it's, these, it's the bathing of tissues when you re-inject your own tissue back. It's, it's probably not fat that's surviving. It's probably those stem cells that are morphing into the tissue they should be in those areas. And I want to share with you some amazing pictures that I saw and first explain to you what a stem cell really is. So a stem cell sits in bone marrow, in embryonic cord blood, and the next most common site for, for stem cells are in our fat stores. So we as plastic surgeons have a real gem to, to use to create something. The concept of a stem cell is you have a cell sitting there without direction about what it should be yet. And if you inject a stem cell into a fracture, a stem cell can become bone. If you inject a stem cell into a spinal cord, maybe we can get people who are paralyzed to regrow nerves. But the fascinating thing about stem cells for us is that we're sitting with a store of them all the time. And essentially, the fun part, guys, is we can borrow from somewhere to pay somebody else, okay? And donor sites that are rich in stem cells are your tummy area, your love handle area, your outer thigh, 
your anterior thigh, the inner knee, and the inner thigh. These are all great sources for stem cells. This is an area that's been overtaken out in an area where there's too much. What we want are smoothness, okay? That's a 10-month post-op picture. And we can go back and repair things that where damage has been done. People who've been over liposuction, for instance, there's big areas of scar tissue where there's just things have been destroyed. And you can go back in and harvest fat and create a nice soft contour. But the thing that's fascinating to me is that we think it's probably more than fat. It's more going on than just moving tissue. There's a big white scar on the top of her nose. By restoring what she was missing with fat, the actual scar remolded and changed as well. It's a regeneration. There were blood vessels that came in. There was tissue remodeling that happened. And he had slide after slide of some amazing things where for reconstructive purposes, you got acne scars, for instance, where the acne scar actually not only got better, but some of the scars actually went away completely. And this is taking this gentleman's fat, putting it back. There's areas of indentation and, and dent scarring and a real softening. And then he went on to show some of his more re-impressive cases. And this just blew my mind. You can't see this case very well, but this is a lady who's lost all of her breast tissue from mastectomies. And this is a fat restoration alone. Took two applications, but fat put in in the appropriate concentrations with stem cells is a fascinating new way we're going. And here you can see an atrophied face uh, and, a, and a resurgence of youth to that face. So these are the reconstructive sides of it, but obviously there's a cosmetic side to it as well. And the lips are easy. You borrow from somewhere you don't like and you put it in the lip. So what we're gonna go through is a few cases of simple to more complex. But remember, a lip isn't just a static column. There are pieces in the lip that need to be augmented more than others. Um, so the, the doing of this is really an art concept that I think is exciting and simple to do in an office type setting. There's no surgery been done to the eyes here at all. This is a hollow that a lot of people have and all that was done was fat was put back to restore volume. In fact, I showed a gal in my office yesterday. I had her come in, I popped this picture up and she had a situation a little worse than this where really hollow, had really lost a lot of volume around her orbit and she thought she needed her lower eyes done. And I said, no, I don't think that's where we're gonna go with you. I think you need fat put back in. I've never done a hand yet, but I think that's spectacular. And I, over the years, people have come to me and says, can you do anything for my hands? And I've always said, no, I don't think so. Let's move to when you add surgery and fat together. This gal has actually had over 60 cc's put back into her face and surgery done to create, correct the neck and the jowl. That's a one year and five month post-op picture. And I saw that and I went, that's impressive. And the next several I'm gonna show you is cra even crazier than this. 47 year old lady, 70 cc's of fat put back in the face, not taken away, put back. So the restoration of this beautiful orbital volume was very impressive. The cheek volume was restored with fat. The temple area was restored with fat. The forehead was restored with fat. And then it was harvested and the neck was cleaned up. So you got a double-edged sword here. You got both things to use. 75-year-old woman. What you see here is her skin changed. With stem cells underneath it, she had a more vibrant skin, a younger looking skin. The brown spots disappeared. The lady wasn't peeled. It was actually what was considered to be the augmentation of that deeper tissue with these very unique cells that restore volume and youth to a face. That's a one year and seven month post-op picture. Anybody looks good at two months. This is a younger woman 80 cc's of fat put in her face. And you just see a total restoration of orbital volume, less nasolabial fold, um, fat in the lips. I, I just think that's tremendous. That brings this short little talk to an end.